So um, if anybody wants to join in, I like this to be just a big open meeting. Um, I believe we're limited to nine folks on video at a time. But if anybody wants to join the video, please do, because I don't like sitting here talking by myself during these meetings. Um, this is basically a Fedora design session live session. So basically what we do is we go through um, the Fedora ticket queue and um, we triage basically Fedora design team issues. And so this is a good opportunity um, if you've ever um, contributed or if you've ever not contributed to Fedora before and you're interested in design, this is a good way to sort of get started and to find tasks to work on. Hey, Maria, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing all right. If, uh, if I ever switch my video off, that's because my son is just trying around. We're going crazy. So <laughs> it's all good. I can get in this one. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'm going to try adding Paul back, but he was having audio issues. So um, if it if it's too loud, just, just brace yourself. Hold on. Um, you know, I didn't really have an agenda beyond the original um, Fedora Design Sessions Live, which is basically we do ticket triage. And if anybody here has like specific issues that they want to bring up first, so we can talk about that first. So I know, Maria, did you have anything that you were working on that you wanted to mention? Um, well, we just kind of talked about it with the Fedora Classic in the previous session. And I just, okay. I don't know if you looked at the poll results, but most people seem to be like, Eight people were for the, this one, and ten people were for both. And yeah, so that's both okay. one in the end. Yeah. I mean, it's totally something we can be flexible about, and we can like have different ones yeah. that people like. We could do a sticker sheet that is just like all different classic style Fedora logos, maybe. Yeah, but we can see. have more even. Why not? Oh, I just saw it for a second. Here it is. Okay, cool. So basically, I'm going to write down the poll results here. Oh, now it loads the images. Jeez. Figura is a, a tricky trickster. Okay, so um, we did a poll at Nest Live, and there seems to be... Okay, cool. So that'll be neat. Yeah, so regarding the ones that are in there right now, do we want to put some more work into them? Are they cool? Like, should we collect feedback? What do you think? Like, I think the year needs to be updated on the car one, and then we could also talk like about different design elements on them. Like, should we, should we work some more? Or are they cool? And stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think we were thinking the date. If we use a date, it should be two thousand three. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this could use some more work. I mean, it was just kind of thrown together. Um, for the classic one, I mean, I had some feedback. I didn't necessarily put it in the ticket, but I guess the the, the one thing that I get from this version is Fedora is like a very rounded thing, but some of the lettering has like square. If that makes sense. So I didn't know if that was something that could just yeah. be rounded off so that like like these corners would just be rounded or something, if that yeah. would make it more. Oh, for sure. I can, I can do that. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. It easily can be done. I mean, if you, if you could leave a comment. Sure. Um, also, there's some Fox were concerned that comes off as elastic, not classic. Maybe we should move it closer to the sea that help oh yeah i think i saw somebody typing that yeah just just filling that gap a little bit just getting yeah it. yeah just bring yeah. it closer in yeah i think that would be good okay let me put that in rounding the corners squared off areas to fit that rounded vibe and pulling the classic closer to the C. Okay. Does anybody have anything else on this one or any ideas for like additional classic layout logos we could do? Honestly, if I, you stop, 
you stop right there and just scroll a little bit back down, I think. Uh, some more. So I, did, uh, I think we were working on one and go up a little bit. This is right above Thunderbird. Yeah. So my, Maria and I were also looking to create something like that. And then we like have a cla classic on top, like with this aster and the, the, oh, yeah. the logo in, in, in between. I mean, if we're doing multiple, we could go that way too. I mean, there's a there's a draft of it somewhere below. But okay. needs some more work because the font was not real good. Oh, oh there I it see is. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, so we could just you know maybe put more work into the attic too. Yeah, and that's a neat option too because it can fit the whole logo with the logo type, not just the mark. I like that. Yeah, and I think also this sheet of and I think these are car logos actually. Yeah, because it's Daimler. Something like this too, like just using these as inspiration. Although some of them, I don't know, like Studebaker, right? Like it has a logo, but it's in the back and it's covered. I don't know if we'd want to cover the logo. The point is to kind of show off the logo, but yeah, there's a lot of ideas here. Cool. All right, so let's move on to another ticket. Does anybody have another ticket they want us to look at? I mean, I think um, um, one that I wanted to talk about today was the wallpaper, because I actually don't know where we stand. I was going to suggest that too. <laughs> yeah, with the, the timing, I, I'm, I'm bad with the schedule. Um, I don't really know if we're, I, I kind of feel like it might be due this month at some point. Um, I don't know if I put the dates in here. So this, by the way, for, I guess, a couple months now, I have been using this as my wallpaper. Um, and it it works. It, it doesn't cause me issues. Um, I like how it's not, like, it has an organic feel because it's real, right? It's not like some kind of 3D whatever. I don't know if it would benefit from, like, a vignette or something like that. I also haven't tested it with other people. I've just been using it, but... I really like it, like just as is like this. Um, uh, people have seen me using it and have made comments on it, how it looks kind of cool. So, I mean, honestly, like I would have no qualms about just shipping with this, but I don't know how other people feel. It's very pretty. How was it created? I should talk a little bit about that. So basically I have this personal interest of um, hand marbled papers because I have done a lot of book binding in the past and it's something that was is used pretty much exclusively for fine art book binding. So my my art, my fine art that I've done outside of Fedora is also influenced by that. So I actually have a marbling kit uh, and that I set it up. I use Fedora colors and I take I took pictures. So this is an, an image that Mo edited. Cool. So I'm, I'm just I'm just thinking like there's more people here probably than usually come to our design sessions. Do you want to give them a bit of a um, background on why we're, we did this? Like what was the idea behind the wallpaper this year? This I really think that's, that. that's a good idea. So um, our inspiration is um, a NASA astronaut, Mae Jameson. And um, she was an astronaut and a medical doctor, and she was studying the effects of weightlessness on the human body. And we were also thinking about, you know, we have the backdrop of the pandemic, which we would like to see end at some point, please, soon, please. Um, so we kind of like talked about these different aspects of it. So we were talking about like, we like the visuals of perspectives and illusion, we like the idea of maybe like a spaceship where you're floating in the spaceship because, you know, Dr. Jemison studied weightlessness. So we really wanted that idea about weightlessness. Um, then the human body, because she studied the human body. That was one uh, another track we were thinking about. We're talking about like a return to normalcy um, where like when you're on a space shuttle or some sort of space station or whatnot, you're sort of like you're weightless and you're floating there. And um, you're sort of cooped up in that space in the same way people were cooped up during the pandemic to their homes when everything was locked down. 
Um, so we were thinking about sort of like you're stuck in this restrictive environment and you're floating, but there's sort of hope for the future. So we're thinking about sort of like hope and like looking to open things up again. Um, yeah. And then this was just sort of like we're feeling again, weightlessness, playing with perspective, that kind of stuff. So those are sort of like the four visual sort of tracks we went on. And I think the idea with um, the marbling is we did, and unfortunately, Pagor is just it's not my friend today. It's not loading stuff. But we we did a few sketches and looked at a few inspirations on making something appear weightless. And Marie had this interesting connection with the marbling and how when you put the inks on the water they're literally floating on the surface of the water and they're kind of swirling and kind of moving and so we thought that working with that would give us sort of the visual of movement in what is a somewhat restricted flat static image right so that's sort of i think how we we ended up on marbling is we're basically you know, again, the overall theme being Mae Jemison and her work studying weightlessness. We wanted the the image to sort of have a a quality of being weightless. So you can kind of feel that. Like you can kind of feel it almost looks like waves on the water and you can see a lot of layers of it. So that's kind of where the theme and kind of concept behind it comes from. So it's sort of connected to the pandemic in a way. And it's also inspired by, you know, this NASA astronaut and scientist very cool i love it and i, I like how the, the top left corner is like a sort of blurry because it's hard for the eye to focus like on, on all of it at the same time so i would suggest we make the right lower right corner kind of blurry to maybe just going into the background a little bit so it doesn't you know so your attention doesn't spend like all, all over the wallpaper but other than that it's really pretty I like it yeah that's why i was thinking something like a vignette or something maybe it could be like a vignette that's not a vignette but it's more of like a blur out you know like a blur yeah. out filter yeah. around the edges yeah. Yeah. and it probably we'd want to draw the eye kind of over here i don't know can you see my mouse pointer i guess you can't um sort of in this lower left corner where there's like you can move uh, the firefox the orange one to where you oh yeah that's a good <laughs> idea so this this area here like if we keep the yeah. eyes focused around here maybe or like here a little bit um the other consideration here is before we get this package for beta um we probably want to change the default color of the fedora logo oh again i'm using my mouse sorry over here is actually a fedora logo but you can't tell it's totally stealth. So we probably want to make it like force it to be white for this release so that it'll stand out. Um, okay. So any more comments on F35? Does anybody want to try this out and test it for us? That would be actually super helpful. I can drop the link. I would try, but then I never see my wallpaper. <laughs> I'll put something I like and then I never open it because I have so many tabs open like and browser windows and I just never get to it at all. Let's see. Oh, these are some, this is actually the same image that I'm using. I did some coloration to it to make it more, more like blue, if that makes sense. Um, Cause it originally had some purple. Um, this is the one actually, I, I pulled the pink out. Um, I think I, oh, this was an idea that I had to make it, you know how the wallpaper can change during time of day. This was an idea for the night version. And then this is the one that I'm using now. So if folks wanted to test these out, given that we'll probably make some tweaks to, um, to the kind of like blurring on the edges and stuff like that. Are you guys cool with this one where it's like a, a little bit of an orange glow to the white? I think I like the one you have more than this one. Yeah. Well, the, the idea is this would be the time of day at night. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So it'd like be sort it. of just, you know, I don't know. So it would kind of fade that way. Okay, cool. Let's see. I'm just checking the comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, I see this Q&A. Yes, the wallpaper can change with the time of day. I think we've been doing that for a while. It might not be set by default, but we usually ship a time of day wallpaper. 
um, the logo for the Fedora calendar. Um, so if you notice that the logo for the Fedora calendar is still using the old logo, definitely file that in the spot, the old logo repo. That would be super helpful. Okay, so let's see. Um, it looks like Paul posted an issue for us to look at next. So let me open that. Oh, and I also just want to quickly capture what we talked about. Um, okay, so we talked about this today in our meeting. Decided to go with this for beta. Some small tweaks for blur focus areas and yet plus fix the Fedora overlay logo to be visible. All right, so now we have notes. Um, oh yeah, so if you're using if you're using not gnome, then you might not notice that the wallpapers are animated. So um, okay, so here is the issue. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so Paul, thanks for filing this. This is helpful. Um, we don't really need to discuss this here because it's just a simple replace. So, but thanks for pointing that out. Um, okay, so let's go back to the queue here. If nobody else has anything they want us to look at, then um, you know I can just go from the top. Uh, okay. Um, okay, oh, this is actually kind of cool, exciting news. I don't know if anybody has noticed this. Um, we actually have been working with Fedora Legal on the new logo. And one of, um, one of my long running, very menial tasks that I have been doing since like 2006 is manning the logo at fedoraproject.org queue. So for a very long time, historically, we were told that, um, well, we were advised it would not be a great idea to just post the SVG publicly for folks to use. We want to sort of talk people through their usage of the logo, make sure they're using the guidelines, things like that. Um, since the ancient history days of, say, 2005 and 2006, um, actually, a lot more brands have started putting downloadable brand kits on their website and having click throughs so that before you download the goodies, it puts up sort of a thing talking about this is the logo users guidelines by downloading this, I agree to follow the guidelines, that kind of stuff, which we never had in place, which is part of the reason why the logo queue was manually whatever. So we've actually been given the go ahead, like formally that we can set up something like that in Fedora. So uh, I no longer have to manually answer people when they ask for the logo. Yay. You know, great. Um, so this ticket is basically to um, basically design the website where people go to download our branding materials. Um, this is probably going to be somewhat of a big project, but we could probably set up a small one first, um, maybe on docs.fedoraproject.org, um, just so people can get the logo files in the meantime. And then um, as we build out the, the Fedora branding guidelines around the new logo, this could be a component of it. So maybe, you know, it's a thing where you're reading the logo guidelines and there's like a sidebar or a toolbar or something that brings you through a workflow where you can actually download the assets. So there's that. Um, and we also could think about sort of how we want to provide those assets. Um, typically now in the logo cube, when people ask for the logo, I kind of ask them, well, what do you want to use the logo for? Or what size do you need? Or what color do you need? And I just do it for them. Um, if it's going to be more self-service, we probably want to give them more of a variety of like little bits and things that they can use to make what they need to make. So like what I like, I have this set of like, what I call them, they're just named sheets. And I, I have like, this is like a full sheet. Um, and it just sort of has like a little bit of everything. Like these are different versions of the logo. Um, these are like different logos that are part of the family, like workstation or silver blue or stuff like that. Um, and we have an application template and a team name template. Um, so, you know, we could just ship this sheet as an SVG, just a single SVG. You could grab the parts of the components you needed from the sheet. Um, and then we're not sending people like this big zip file of all this different stuff. So, you know, that's one approach. I don't know if folks have ideas or preferences on when they download the Fedora logo, how they prefer to get it. But that's one idea that I had. Um, another thing that I think would be uh, along the lines of the logo. And let me think. I think it's actually... 
Oh, and I just wanted to show this is my final, the final, final, final <laughs> Fedora logo directory. That's where I keep it right now. Um, I started working on, oh, ah, hold on. I started working on a, a colorblind safe palette for Fedora. So probably the palette that's here. Um, so these are sort of like the formal colors, but say you're using the Fedora palette, you wanna make a chart or diagram or something. Um, this is a set of colors and you can see, hold on. Okay, the resolution on this is a little bit lower than I'd like, but this is basically, this is sort of like what the colors look like for normal vision. And they're ordered in a certain order so that if you use them in this specific order, left to right in like a chart, so you're trying to like color things differently so they stand out. Um, it optimizes the differences in them for folks affected by different forms of colorblindness so that they can distinguish between the different items. So I think that that should definitely moving forward be part of our brand kit is sort of colorblind safe color palettes for charts and infographics and stuff like that. So that'll be sort of a new addition. Um, if anybody has any ideas and other things that they think we should include in that packet, I think we should be deliberate and think about it because I don't, it's not something we ever thought about deliberately before. Um, we, we basically just send people either we make something that is specifically what they need, or we just ship them a bundle of um, SVGs tarred up. And we could probably do better than that now that we can actually build a web presence around it. So I'm excited about that ticket and definitely can use help with this, you know, from everything from figuring out the design, figuring out what kind of payload we're giving when we give people our brand kit um, to actually implementing the site. All of that is stuff that's open that we need help with. So I thought that ticket would be worth talking about. Um, okay, so Paul, as you find stuff that's not consistent, um, definitely file tickets. Let me look at this and see what, what it is specifically. Yeah, so Paul, we, we already brought this one up. Um, oh no, actually this is not the logo, this is the theme. Yeah, so this is something that is just, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We have a standard um, theme that we use for Fedora infrastructure apps. I think actually, honestly, Pagora itself is a good example of that. So we have the gray bar, we have the Fedora logo in small, and this has been updated with the new logo. We need to update this one too, but it's just the logo type that has to be updated and the color, I guess. So we'll have the logo there, just the logo type, the name of the app, and then a gray scale icon that is unique to that app. And again, that's part of the thing that we talked about in the logo talk before this one is we like having unique icons for the fave icons tab so people can find their tab when they're working with a lot of stuff in the window. Um, so yeah, I think up, updating the Fedora calendar to this style is a good idea. Um, what Where the design team would come into this basically is coming up with that grayscale logo for the calendar. And once that logo is ready, we would pass this off to the websites team to actually update it. There's a whole um, bootstrap based CSS theme that these sites use that makes them look consistent. And I think just it would take somebody with web development skills to go ahead and do that update. So I'm actually gonna write that. So design team task is to create the grayscale calendar icon. Please file a ticket with the websites team to update to the new standard that Pagor etc. use. Um, I think it's just pagur.io websites for the website one. No, the Fedora web oh, Fedora websites. Here you go. All right, I just posted it. Paul. Um, what else we have here? If you require people to extract logos from a sheet, they might do it poorly. Yeah. A collection of PNGs makes it easy for people to get a properly cropped image. Yes, but um, mm, yeah, I guess we could have a thing where you could download the PNGs 
you could opt into what you wanted. So if you wanted low hassle, you just wanted it ready to go, you could download PNGs. Um, typically, the, the bulk of requests we get to the local queue is actually people who want the SVG for very specific reasons. So you know maybe we could do the SVG sheet for people who want SVG and know what they're doing. And then if you just need a copy of the logo for whatever that needs to be ready-made, then we give you a PNG bundle. That could be one thing to consider. So... I'll throw that in as a comment because I think that's actually helpful. Um, oh, here. Consider providing SVG as a sheet of multiple assets and also making available individual logos in PNG format as a bundle for folks who don't want to DIY. Okay. What is this Python community logos? Oh, is the Fedora Python logo on there? That would be cool. Oh, yeah, that is a good model to follow, actually. Let me... Throw that in the ticket too. Thank you for that, Miro. Oh, yes, I didn't see you were joining. Hold on. Hi, sorry. It hey doesn't there. like make a noise or anything. <laughs> so I just shared a, the Python logo for the formats. Like there is a picture, and then you can choose one of the couple formats. I don't know if the Photoshop one is really required for us, but you can get PNG and SVG and stuff. They also have a couple more options, but if we really have like 20 different kinds of the logos in 20 different formats, it might look more complex. I really like this one. It's created by a, a third party service. I don't know if it's Czech or English by default, but you can change it to English in the top right corner. Okay, look. Yeah, English. Yeah, so you can you can get some fonts and colors, and if you click the logos, then you can choose the picture. Like in this case, they only have two, but we would have plenty. And if you click one of them, you can see it on dark background, light background, and you can download multiple formats, and you see all these information. Oh, that's great! Oh, that's great! And then let's see the logo see pack, the logo what it looks pack. like. Oh, yes, yeah, so they have digital versus print. I don't know if, if it's MIG. Uh, yeah. You get multiple options in there as well. It's funny, though. It's CMYK because it's like it's black and white in the end. Yes. It doesn't matter that much. <laughs> it's, it's black, though, isn't it? Like some special CMYK gray yeah anyway uh so i think it's really nice uh way of presenting the the stuff you can download for, for logo it, they also offer typefaces uh and colors this is great and uh, it's created by visual book uh in the bottom right corner or even bottom left there is a link uh, i'm not necessarily saying we should use this because it's probably not open source i'm not sure yeah, but we can use it as, as inspiration. Cool. Oh, this is great. Thank you. I, yeah, I love seeing kind of examples of folks who do it right. So we can try to do it right ourselves, you know. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I think I think there is um, I think there's an open source platform to do this kind of stuff. And we tried to make a thing a long time ago. And it was some kind of weird, I don't know if it was like Ruby on Rails or something, but it was something to do with how it was implemented, just made it very difficult to, to use. So we, we may want to do something where it's just, it's something that could be on docsfedoraproject.org or something like that and use that system. So it's not too complex. It's sort of just static content, if that makes sense. And easy to update. You don't have to be like a coder to do it. Yes, it's probably for the best. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much, Mira. I actually did the the early, if not the first Fedora or first GNOME logo guideline guide, the Fedora branding guide, very long time ago.
Oh, interesting. This is pretty minimalist. I think ours would definitely be more complex because we have so many sub projects and teams and stuff. But I think this is a good reference. So I will also add that to the ticket. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so let's look at the next. Oh, this is one I've been working on lately. I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Um, so this is for Apple. Apple needs, um, oh, that's the mascot. Hold on, I want to do the logo. Apple um, doesn't actually have an official logo or like a real logo. So let's see. I think the original thing, the original mock-ups had like, a horse with a, oh yeah, Pegasus with a briefcase. Um, the issue with these mock-ups is the image wasn't, it was a clip art that wasn't openly licensed, if that makes sense. So we couldn't go with this. Um, and plus uh, the typography definitely is not like, we, we need to do something with the typography to make it more integrated rather than just sort of floating there. Um, so I played around with it a little bit. Um, that's where we're talking about the license. Oh, right. So then what happened is there was some suggestion maybe to put Apple in the Fedora bubble. Um, and that's kind of a big branding no-no, unfortunately. It's against our guidelines to have anything or like be, you know, removing components of the logo like that. And this also uses Comforta, which we're sort of trying to get away from. Um, so I kind of came in and sort of suggested a few things. Um, yeah, so I was trying to figure out, like, these are sort of, for Apple, sort of the thing that is, like, at the the level or, like, almost like its peer, I feel like would be almost like addition level, because Apple is something that you kind of add on to an OS, um, and it's got, like, a repo and everything, and each one of these is a repo. I mean, I don't, it's very strange thinking, but I just feel like in terms of, like, what level or complexity Apple is, it feels like it, it sort of appear to the Fedora editions. So first I looked at those, and then I looked at um, how can we, so you see how this artwork, it's like these rounded squares, um, rounded long rectangles, and then like the server has little nubbies. So I was trying to use that same graphic quality so we could sort of fit with their look, which is very simplistic, I understand. But so I tried to implement the Pegasus using that. It actually kind of looks like um, an old 1980s adventure game. If anybody's played Space Quest or King's Quest, he kind of looks like that. Um, but it's kind of weird too. So, you know, we, we did a bunch of iteration um oh yeah so let me go through here it is so unfortunate that like pigor is doing this it's very unfortunate um all right that's where i ended up so i started playing with this guy and like trying to do different things with him so trying to make him look like he was a pegasus but at the same time like so you could you know so it fit with the other graphics but then also sort of i don't know was meaningful um I kind of started coming at this and I really like the tail shape. You know, I like for whatever reason was really intrigued by that. I thought it was neat. I thought it could make a neat abstract figure. Um, and again, this is just trying to simplify, simplify, simplify because the original ones just had too many components to actually hang with the addition artwork. Um, so then what I did is I thought, well, let me focus in on the tail. That kind of gives you a suggestion. It's coming from a place. The theme is sort of a Pegasus and it has this tail but it, it's kind of a pleasing shape. Let's play with it. Um, so I started kind of positioning it next to this stuff to see if it would fit. Um, and it kind of really doesn't, <laughs> to be honest. So this is sort of back and forth, back and forth. Um, let me see. Yeah, so then the idea was folks like that shape, but... Um, the idea is sort of Apple is something you add on. So they wanted it to appear like have two components at least where like one component is added to the other to sort of express the idea that Apple is a thing you add on to a, an existing OS. Um, and I'll kind of skip over, let's see where's the full set. 
I started trying to make it look more like the artwork for server where it has like the little components, but I didn't think that worked too well. Um, oh yeah, and then Kyle was kind of trying to work with that too. I think actually that was Kyle's idea. So then I, I tried to simplify it more, adding more spacing. And this is sort of like the final set of ideas we came with. And this rotate number four folks really liked. Um, I think they actually did a vote on one of their big meetings. I don't know if it was like a council or board or whatever the governance is for Apple. They, they sort of took a look at these and they really liked four. Um, it's kind of neat. I, I, I kind of did these five and six to make it look like an E. Um, and I think this almost looks like a socket wrench or something with like a bolt and things like that. And they like the idea too, cause it's sort of Apple is something you bolt onto the system. They liked that the bottom bit was pink using the Fedora magenta color. Um, because that sort of is what symbolizes RHEL or CentOS or whatnot. And of course, RHEL's color is red. So you're sort of in the same family. And then there's sort of like this wrench bolting on Apple on top of it as a layered add-on. So anyway, so folks like this. So, you know, it's not finished yet, but they needed a logo to use here at Nest. So that's what we went with for now. We'll probably refine it more. But I feel like that, and hold on, let me see if I can find... Oh no. Oh yeah. I feel like that might hang better with these guys than the original horsey guy. Let's see. I mean, it definitely looks, you know, cause it has the three layers as does server has three layers. IOT has three rows. Um, workstation has two, but this one really takes up two. So it kind of feels like it could fit in the same space as those, I think. Yeah, there is an optical illusion. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about how that comes out. I, I kind of, it it makes me feel like it's it's like a socket wrench being turned. And I think that's sort of very um, symbolic to what, what it actually is. So yes, IoT does, does have it too. And I also, they're single color and then they're sort of um, clipped to a, like a, it's like that weird fedora triangles graphic that we use with the colors. So anyway, I don't if anybody has feedback on this. I mean, I know that it needs to be refined a bit more, but I'm not even sure what to do with it right now. Let me, let me pull that up so we can see it. It's really cool. It's great to, to see, you know, how the thought progresses through all these stages of logo making, like how you get from a very, uh, you know, clip party horse guy to this. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, talking about the horse guy, like the one that you had the, the picture where there were four of them. Like the uh -huh. one of the, on the right is really cool. Like, I really like that one. And it's kind of sad to see him go like with the yellow. Well, you know, they, they opened up another ticket for a mascot. And I wonder yeah. if we couldn't, couldn't refine that artwork to actually function as the mascot. And then it would match the logo mark very well, I think, because they came out of the same process. Um, let me see if I can find him. Where did you go, little Tracy? I'm trying to load in this that it's page. Maybe it that if you've loaded them in different tabs, now it will load in here. Sometimes happens to me. With the oh, oh, hey. Yay. Well, yeah, it looks like the ones that I did open are maybe appearing. Some of them are anyway. Oh yeah, the, the one bit about this, where did the, the centaur come from? Um, I think it was something to do with CentOS and the centaur, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A combination of CentOS and Fedora. So if you say Centora, it sounds like Centaur. So that's why they wanted to go with the Centaur. I thought that was a cute reason. Um, oh, okay, this one. The one on this one, this guy? The one, yeah, the other one on the right here. It, it, it can stands out from all the others. Like if you, even, if, even if you zoom out, right? He's, uh, yeah. He's, there's this group of spacing going on that. Just, you know, and proportion of his body to his another body. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
when he looks like he's kind of running or something he's he's serious you know i don't know what it he's doing he's serious forward, about though. it yeah yeah <laughs> cool cool yeah so i mean maybe that would be a good candidate for the mascot what i will do actually is go ahead and put that in the mascot ticket um and then it'll kind of be nice and matchy matchy that would be good there's another ticket that I did at the same time as this one that I want to show too. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me just say. We defo should have a Pegasus as a mascot. Um, and Here is the centaur. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. And when you upload it, it usually loads. It's just, I don't know what's, what's wrong with it. It's some kind of caching issue. All right, so then the other one that I wanted to show while that goes, it's quite slow maybe because of Nest going on and everybody using it. Um, it was, which one was it? Was it copper? No, it wasn't copper. Um, you know what? I closed it because I think they were happy with it. So hold on. Ah, ELN. That's it. So ELN is, um, I think it's a, oh yeah, rebuild of Rawhide with enterprise build configuration. So they kind of just needed something like a logo or something to use. Um, and I think he had, Stephen had suggested something like a jar of green pickle relish because ELN puts the rel ish on Beefy Miracle, kind of like you have a hot dog and then rel and it sounds like relish. So this is what I came up with. I was quite pleased with it. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. That was the first idea. The first idea was to use that same scheme, but like flip the desktop and make it narrower and make it a pickle jar. But like talking with Matthew, he's like, well, it's not really a sibling of these things. It's actually kind of much lower down. So you definitely don't want to like elevate it to that level. So that's fine. That's cool. So um, here's the thing. I think this is what we're going with. <laughs> so the mustard, the ketchup, and the pickle jar. And I think th there was a there's something to do with El Nino or something. So I, I added the that accent mark to the pickle jar lid to kind of show that that's where the that part of the name of ELN came from. So, and I, again, it's sort of this whole thing where it's like single color, simplistic artwork with like a lot of sort of stylistic spacing. So I feel like it's kind of still in the same family of these. It's using the same palette, but it's just sort of like, this is not gonna be a super prominent logo. It's not super critical. It's just where you need a logo to talk about this thing. This is what they're gonna use. So it's very low key. So I was happy with that one. Yeah, it's great. It's, it uh, puts a smile on my face. And it's <laughs> yeah, and it's very traditional fedora with the link to Beefy Miracle, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I see anything else. Oh, I get, I think this one, this one. Oh, this is a cool one that Daria was working on. I don't know if she's here right now. Um, this is a new sticker sheet. Check that out. Isn't that really neat? I love how it uses the colors. So I would I would probably consider this closed unless she needs to I guess she probably needs to put it into Scribus and get it print prepped. But other than that, I really like this. And the shapes look like they would be pretty easy to die cut to. They wouldn't be like complex or anything. Um what else? This one, the copper branding update is kind of an interesting case study for the new logo rollout. Um, so they have, let's see, this is what it looks like right now. So they have this mark and I think I'm trying to remember what the mark actually is. Um, 
Oh, it's a dill seed because dill in Czech means, or maybe copper in Czech means dill. Um, but it has like a brown color, but it definitely doesn't follow the, the standard of the Fedora Infra apps. Like if you popped up figure here, it, it, this is like the old, like three or four Fedora websites ago when we used the blue gradient. So it's just a very dated theme that it's using. And um, it just doesn't, it's just not following the standard basically. But I think they don't like the idea of going grayscale. They really like having the color. So we're sort of working back and forth, trying to figure out what could be a good solution. And this is sort of a list of some of these websites that, that use the new style like elections does, Bodhi does, and we're kind of getting, we're starting to get some consistency with this look and feel. So, you know, I really want to see Fedora infrastructure apps using this, this gray theme. And, you know, the idea is if it's like, if it's gray, it's part of the infrastructure, it's sort of intranet. Whereas if it has color, then that's sort of a public facing site. So it's a good way to know, is this a user focused site or is this a, internal site. So um, yeah, so we sort of went back and forth and this was sort of one of the proposals I came up with um, to have sort of this standard logo set for copper at the top and using that mark and gray scale, but then adding the addition of like in the footer. And I don't even know, like, does this one have a footer? I have no idea. It does have a little bit of a footer, but adding an area into the footer. So like, you know, we could consider copper to also like be an upstream of itself and just sort of have that color logo and then whatever logo type they want for like an upstream version of the copper logo, we could put that in the footer. So it would still have exposure on the website. So they wouldn't lose that color mark if it makes sense. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was one idea that I had for them. And then what, let me see what, the the other idea the other way they could go um i think i had posted a mock-up but now oh here it is so so you guys can see like the before and after here i don't even know like the url off the top of my head so i'm just gonna yeah so this is the sort of the mock-up next to what it is right now so it's just kind of, instead of this area being like a little box here, it's using that full sort of hero area that some of the Fedora projects uh, infra stuff does and then taking that color scheme. And I mean, it's not like a major change, but it does make it hang with these other guys that we have here. Like here's Bodhi, sort of from the same family. Oh, look, note that the resolution of the mock-up's a little bit wonky right now, so. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll see where the ticket goes, but I think it'll be an interesting case study to kind of figure out what the standard is. One thing that you may note that I'm trying to change the standard so that the actual name of the thing is in the darker blue. So the uh, apps that already had that theming style don't have that. And like this app also has the old logo mark there. So or the old logo type there. So some stuff does need to be updated, but still looking at sticking with that. So I think that's kind of an interesting case study. So I don't know. I mean, unless anybody had anything else I want to talk about today, uh, you know, I actually haven't eaten breakfast or lunch. So, and it is 1230 here almost right now. So um, unless anybody had anything, you know, and it's total open floor. Um, oh, let me add Miro because I think it looks like he requested again. I wanted to say, Hi. go ahead and eat. But uh, since you let me in, just want to say that copper is not that infra and contributors only because our users actually use it as well. If they oh, want okay. to enable oh, okay. Rebo. So it's kind of like a hybrid because you package stuff in it, but the consumers, the users also go to Copper to find software or, or uh, they probably don't go to like Copper Fedora in cloud org, but they are like uh, from Fedora magazine, they might go to a specific Copper repo. Uh, so it's not entirely- Oh, that makes entirely sense. It's like the Ubuntu has the, what do they call them? The add-on repos. Yeah, yeah, is it like PPA? Mm -hmm. Is it kind of equivalent to that? Yes, basically the same thing. Oh, well, let me see how they treat so, it. Hold on. Uh, I, I no, I get it, I get it now. Yeah, so maybe it doesn't make sense to have it under that. I mean, maybe it makes sense to give it 
something that's more user focused. I'm trying to figure out where is where is even yeah. is the PPA website. Do you know where they are? Are they just in, in Launchpad? Is that how it works? I think they are just in Launchpad. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't used it in many, many years. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me look if I can see it. OK. Yeah, so I think this is what it is. Yeah, so you know, maybe we want to do a custom one off for, for Copper. I think that, you know, that's I'm, I'm so glad you pointed that out because if it's meant to be end user facing, it probably should have the color. It should, yeah, no, I see it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for pointing that out. I'm actually going to update this. Um, okay. You're welcome. And now you can have your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.